Welcome to part 6 of making the Stuart model steam plant. More parts arrived from the USA and I think that these are the last boxes of bits from which I will select the best parts to build the steam plant. The unpacking of the final box is on my kitchen table. This however is the penultimate box and I'm in the workshop. This is a piece of fire grate looking suspiciously like it came from Blackgate's engineering. And I think the tank is some sort of a condenser, I've never seen one like this before. Possibly it could be a PM research part. Although I only need one gas burner, the larger type, there are plenty of them, so I have some spares. Next out of the box is a spirit burner for a 504 boiler. Closely followed by a couple of chimneys for a 504 boiler too. The whole idea of this is to pick the best parts out of what have been sent. Then I get to keep the rest of the parts in payment for doing the job. This seems like a good idea because there are quite a lot of parts, but every one of them does need work. But that's okay by me, I'll be making videos of the progress of the steam plant, as well as working on some of the excess parts. On screen at the moment is a second 504 spirit burner, and to the left of the gas burners are a pair of really excellent PM Research hand pumps. These are really beautiful. You can never have too much rubber tubing if you play around with steam engines, and here's an extra piece for my stock. In this clip, there's a bag of boiler fittings too. The boiler barrel that's just appeared on screen is a Stuart 501 type, and here are a couple of side plates complete with dents. Here is the smallest of the range, the 500 boiler, and you can clearly see the difference between the two by the number of pipes that are underneath it. This boiler has had an impact on one of the bushes, possibly where the safety valve was. I think I'll do a whole video dedicated to removing dints from old Stuart boiler shells. Although sometimes it's not possible and it's not practical. Sometimes it's a good idea to clad the boiler in either a brass sheet or a copper sheet to cover up any damage. On screen currently are a set of rods that hold together the 500 and 501 type of boiler. The larger 504 boiler uses a different method entirely. I found another one of these small tanks. I can't make up my mind what they are. They look like condensers, but one of them has three pipe connections instead of two. So I don't know what's going on there. I've just found another hand pump and what looks like a gas tank. I'll look at these parts closely in the fullness of time. The next thing out of the box is a single spirit burner for a 500 or 501 type. This is the cast iron end plate from one of the boilers. I think it's a 500. And as you can see, it appears to have had some ultra violence in the past. I may attempt to repair this by making a new part and welding it in place. The contents of the box are now temporarily on my workbench. I have a space where I can put these, but I really am running out of space. I'm looking forward to some of my customers actually picking up the jobs I've done for them. So here we go, one by one, I put the parts on the shelf. There are so many Stuart boilers, I've forgotten how many there actually are, there's about five or six. I don't want these boilers, and what I will be doing is selling them once I've built this plant. There was a time when I used to put adverts on my website, and everything always sold quickly, but now I just offer things to my kind Patreon supporters. That's it, the parts are filed away, so it's down into the house to unpack the next box. There are quite a few electrical parts amongst this collection. The first things out I think are designed to keep cables tidy, but I won't need to use those. There are three quite large lamps that I can see, and I'm thinking that these may be a little bit overscale, but then again, the 504 boiler's overscale, so it should be okay. This is yet another Stuart S50 engine, and this one resembles a wasp. I've already got two of them, and I've already had a look at two of them. I wonder if this is any better. What a surprise, it's worse than the others. On this engine, the piston appears to hit the inside of the cylinder at the far end of the stroke. Luckily, the cylinder is loose and moves out of the way. Although the cylinder is not meant to be loose, it is a common problem with Stuart S50 engines. A close-up shows just how much it's moving. It's only held in place by four screws underneath. This currently looks to be the worst of the three from a mechanical aspect. 
Time to look at these street lamps, and the good news is there are three of them, the bad news is the double one is in a bit of a state. There are cracks in both of the lamps at the top as you can see, and this part is very loose indeed, with very little provocation it snapped off. It's impractical to repair these lamps, I don't know what they're made of, but it won't be something that I can readily solder. These two lamps could be serviceable, I don't like the bulbs though, they look like they've come off a 1950s Christmas tree. I think I would modify this and fit a more modern bulb. I don't know what this is, it looks like a miniature biscuit barrel. There's something inside it, I'd better have a look and see what it is. It's a bag of very random compressed air fittings, and I've never seen any exactly like this before. The British ones that I use are considerably different to these. And then there's this that I really don't understand. It has a liquid level gauge on it, and an outlet, and takes a screw cap. What is this? Is it a bangle? Well, no, it's a bit big for that. It could be a bangle for putting round a very large lady's arm to tie her to the bed, but we won't go there. I think it's probably an earth strap for a very large pipe. These parts are instantly recognisable. It's a reversing kit for a Stuart 110V. And the customer wants me to fit this to his 110V. And I will do this in due course. One of the 504 boilers is a brand new one from Stuart Models and I do believe that these are the side plates and the thermal insulation to fit it. In this box is a small steam engine. I think it's probably a finished self-assembly kit. Although the castings could do with a bit of fettling, it's okay. When I look underneath I can clearly see PM Research made in USA. It's quite a small engine. When you put it against an S50, which is also quite a small engine, it is even smaller. This looks familiar. It's the newspaper wrapping by Matt at Blackgates Engineering. So this went from Blackgates over to America and it's now come back to me. A very well-travelled piece of thick-walled copper tubing. I assume the other piece probably also came from Blackgates. The customer asked me if I could make the steam plant with the boiler and engines mounted on a tiled floor. And here are the tiles, and I think they should look okay. There's quite a large sheet of very thin tiles. These are doll's house materials. And there you have it. My kitchen table is not as messy as usual, but it's getting there. This is my bottle of wine and did not arrive in the package. And that's about it. Today I think I'll look at the S50 steam engine that resembles a wasp. But that's it for now. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.